I've always been a big fan of the full fat Range Rover. I think it's just about the most opulent thing this side of a Rolls Royce. But a full week with the new Range Rover Sport, well, I think I might just have a new favourite in the range. Its strong, bold stance is recognisably Range Rover, but a raked profile separates it from its siblings and gives it a more dynamic profile. Its predominantly aluminium architecture wraps around the car to form something that looks very civilised. Our test car has been given the black on black treatment in the form of the black pack, which picks out all of the chrome in black as opposed to silver. And of course you get the very heavily tinted rear glass. This car wears its optional 21 inch alloy wheels like a fine piece of jewellery. The overall appearance is posh, privileged, and just a little bit sinister in this specification, I think. Now I'm often asked, what is the difference between a Range Rover and a very highly specced Land Rover these days? And I always answer, it's attention to detail. Looking around this really highly appointed cabin, you'll find little things like brushed aluminium in little places that could otherwise be plastic. You'll find soft closing doors on things like the uh, glove box and this centre armrest here. It's those little things that make you think, yes, people have spent some extra time going over the little nuances of this space. The whole interior is bathed in really high quality leather. There's brushed aluminium all over the place. I love the dark wood specified on this car. And from the driver's seat, where well, you sit high up in that highly regarded lofty driving position in a very comfortable seat fitted with an armrest, of course, because you just waft along in a vehicle like this as if the whole world and everything else around you is, well, just down a peg, as if you're elevated above the rest of the world, both literally and metaphorically. The front seats are heated, cooled and massaging, all controlled via the wide touchscreen infotainment display, the InControl Touch Pro unit from JLR. It's proven itself to be a really good unit and it's a great addition to the new Range Rover Sport. The rear bench seats three, you just about get away with three adults thanks to respectable headroom, even with this glass panoramic roof optioned on this car, and a nice flat floor means there's good levels of legroom too. The rear passengers in this Range Rover Sport are well looked after too, as if they're a bit chilly, those seats are heated and they're treated to their own rear infotainment displays. The large rear tailgate opens to reveal 784 litres of space, and the push of a button can reveal a tow hook. But the biggest change to this Range Rover Sport is the addition of the three litre supercharged V6 engine straight out of the Jaguar F-Type. It produces 335 brake horsepower and 450 newton meters of torque. Thanks to this Range Rover weighing less than you might expect and all wheel drive, it'll get from zero to 60 miles per hour in just 6.9 seconds. Whilst the V6 in this car might not sound quite as sonorous as it does in the F-Type, it certainly does its job. The car feels brisk and, and not just for a big car, I mean it's quick generally speaking. And combined with the really agile traits that define the sport model, um, it's actually a real joy to drive. I think the handling of the Range Rover Sport is enough to surprise just about anybody. It's so sure-footed but also quick to change direction. Strong body control from such a tall vehicle again defies physics and you can really exploit the amount of grip that is on offer. Yes, you do have to rev out that V6 to get the most of it, but I suppose that's half the fun. ZF automatic transmission here does its job well in selecting ratios by itself, but it's also quite responsive when selected manually via the paddles on the steering wheel. But my favorite thing about the V6 Range Rover is just how tranquil and relaxing it is to drive. Even the most stressful day just sort of melts away. The V6 engine cruising speed, it just, it's almost silent and there's very little wind and road noise that comes into the cabin. The ride is really good at soaking up even the worst road imperfections and you just sort of, all your, all your issues of the day melt away as, as you arrive home more relaxed than where you set off. The Sport can also be had with plenty of technology, everything from the suspension squatting down to enable you to get in and out easier in the car, the gesture control hands-free tailgate that enables you to load the back without touching the car, but the most impressive piece of technology in any Land Rover and Range Rover product is its ability to go off-road. Because as well as the brawn to go off-road, the high ride height, the grunt from the engine, it also has the brains to go with it in the form of its terrain response system. Terrain response 2, as with its predecessor, allows you to manually select various terrains that the vehicle might be going on, allowing the computer's brain to set itself for muddy ruts, snow, gravel, the works. But it also has an auto mode for maybe those who are less experienced off-roading, 
just push this center button down there and it works out what surface it's on and what setup it needs to have for differentials and ride height and things like that. An option box definitely worth ticking is the weighed depth sensor, which is featured in the wing mirrors and it's like sonar. It tells you how deep the water you're going through is and it will also sound an alarm if you're about to enter water that's too deep for the vehicle. Potential lifesaver on such an expensive car. And therein lies Range Rover's secret to success. It's a car that does just about everything. It's brisk enough to get you from point A to point B in about half the time that you're anticipating. It's comfortable enough for those long motorway hauls, but it's also able to point its nose just about anywhere and get you to the top of whatever mountain you choose. The ability to be jack of all trades means this potentially does three cars jobs. And whilst it costs from 64,400 pounds, in that respect, you could sort of see it as being good value. The word of warning, do watch out for the options list. As with any premium car, you can significantly increase the cost. For example, £64,400 is the entry level price for this car. This car that I'm driving now with all of its toys, £84,000. Range Rover claim that this car emits 243 grams per kilometre of CO2 and will return 26.9 mpg. The new Range Rover Sport looks sharp, drives sharp, and is arguably one of the most complete cars on sale today. Thanks very much for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for all of the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For breaking news and written reviews, visit www.insidelane.co.uk.